G'day, ladies and gentlemen. Scotty D here from the Australia's Tabletop Wargaming Network, and welcome into our next instalment in our series, How to Play Warhammer 40,000, 10th Edition. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to our next installment in our How to Play Warhammer 40,000, 10th Edition series, where we're continuing to look at the different ways that you can play the game, how you go about constructing army lists, and the core mechanics of the game as well. We'll be continuing to take a look at the phases of the battle round as we have been doing and looking at the next phase being the charge phase and how to go about getting into close combat in 10th edition. So the charge phase itself is broken up into five different steps. Now the first step in the charge phase is to select an eligible unit. Now a unit is eligible to make a charge move if it is within 12 inches of one or more enemy units at the start of the charge phase. However, such units are only allowed to make a charge move if none of the following apply to them, which are the unit made an advance or fallback move this turn, unless there's a rule that applies to them to allow them to charge after doing so. Uh, the model is within engagement range of an enemy unit or the unit has the aircraft keyword. So flying aircraft cannot make charges, which is great to see uh, after some shenanigans in 9th edition with that. Now, once you have determined which units are eligible to make a charge, you then select the unit or units you are wanting to declare a charge with, starting with the first unit you want to declare. Each eligible unit can only be selected once per charge phase to make a charge move. Now, the next step in the charge phase is to select the charging targets. Once you have selected the unit that you're wanting to declare a charge with, you then must select one or more enemy units within 12 inches of the eligible unit that is going to make the charge to the target or targets of the charge. It is important to note that the target unit or units do not need to be visible to the charging unit when you are selecting them as a target of the charge. So you're able to charge something that is behind line of sight if you're able to move through wars as infantry uh, with the infantry keyword. So that's a really important thing to bear in mind during the charge phase. Now, after you have selected the target units or unit for the charge, the next step is to make the charge roll. To make a charge roll, you roll 2d6, and the result is the maximum distance that the models can move in the charging unit when they are performing that charge move, if possible, to reach the enemy target units. For the charge move to be possible, the charge roll must be sufficient to enable the charging unit to end the charge move with the following parameters. Within, it must end the move within engagement range of each enemy unit you selected as the target units of the charge. Without moving within engagement range of any enemy units that you did not declare as targets of that unit's charge. And they must maintain unit coherency when making that charge move as well. Now, if any of these three conditions aren't met, then the charge fails and no models in the charging unit make that charge move. However, if these three conditions are met, then the charge is successful and you move on to the next step, which is making the charge move. Now, when moving models in the charging unit, they can move up to a maximum distance that you rolled for their charge move. So you don't have to necessarily move that entire distance, but you can move that full distance if you need to, or use that extra movement to wrap around the unit if you're able to do so. If you have enough movement to move a charging model into base to base contact with one or more models in the target unit, whilst allowing for the rest of the unit to legally complete the charge move, then you must do so. So this will be commonly summed up as if when you're making charge, if you can base, you must base in terms of that terminology. As the controlling player of the charging unit, you get to determine in order of which the models in your unit move when you are moving into that engagement range with the charging unit to base to base or within range of engagement with the opposing enemy unit that you have charged. Now, once you have completed moving all models within the charging unit, you'll then move on to resolving the next charge. Now, we're going to look at two different examples here in just one second. We're going to look at how to just resolve a basic charge and then also how to resolve doing a charge into multiple units as well. 
Alrighty everyone, so we're just going to walk through a couple of different examples looking at how to resolve charges during the charge phase. We're going to look at how to charge into a single unit, what it looks like to charge into multiple units, charging into terrain, as well as charging with fly keyword units as well. So first up, we have got a unit of 10 Necron Warriors up against a unit of five Space Marine Incursors. Now the Incursors have got the turn, so they are going to try and make a charge move in to the Warriors here. So we've just got to measure their movement first for how far they actually need to get that charge. So they're going to need a 5 inch roll on the dice as they are within that 6 inches. So as long as they get within engagement range, they'll be able to make this charge. And they do end up rolling that 6. So they are able to make that charge move. And so you've just got to, again, move your model so they get to move 6. So if you can base, you must base first. And so these front 3 will end up having to base those three and then the next lot will end up just needing to move their six inches into that engagement range there as well. Alrighty, so now we've got our next example which is going to be how to resolve charges into multiple units. So we've got five Lich Guard right here that are going to be resolving a charge or attempting to charge both the Intercessors and the Incursors at the same time. A bit ambitious, I know, but uh, they're going to try and achieve it with only five Lich Guard remaining. So we're going to see how far they actually need to get to both units. So they're going to need at least, uh, they're going to need a seven to get into base to base with the incur uh, the inf the intercessors, I should say. And then they're going to need a nine to get into the incursors. So it means they're going to need a nine inch charge to be able to complete the charge. Uh, because when declaring multiple targets, you have to be able to get into base contact with both of them uh, when doing so. So they're going to see what their charge distance is. And they're going to get a six, which means they do indeed fail that charge. However, if they were to succeed that charge, so say for example, they rolled that nine, which we just got. The way it'll work is you have to get models, at least one model into each unit, and then you go from there. So the first way we'll go is we'll get this first model within that engagement range up to there. This model over here will have to get into contact there. This guy will be able to get into contact with the intercessors there. Obviously, if you can base, you must base. And then the other remaining Lich Guard, still keeping unit coherency, will go like that. Now, what we didn't walk through in the previous video is your pile in when you go to make attacks. Now, this is gonna be in the fight phase, so we'll be covering that in the next video. But as you can see, We've got two Lich Guard that are firmly able to attack into the Incursors, and then we've got three that are able to strike into the Intercessors as well, and they have successfully charged both units. Now, there are two additional rules sections when it comes to the charge phase, which detail how to charge over terrain or how to make charge moves when you're interacting with terrain as well as charging models that have got the fly keyword as well. We'll have an example for each of these as well. So we'll start off by looking at the charging over terrain section. Now, unless it's otherwise stated, a model can move over a terrain feature, but not through it when it is making a charge move. Just like moving over terrain during the movement phase, if a terrain feature is two inches or less in height, a model can move over it freely without taking any movement penalties to go over it. However, if a terrain feature is more than two inches in height, then models are able to climb up and down it as a part of their move, counting any vertical distance made uh, and moved when making that charge move over that terrain. So when we are looking at this next example, we're gonna look at a unit of intercessors that are being charged on the first level of a ruin by a unit of Lich Guard, and we'll go about how to resolve that as well. Alrighty, so our next example is going to be dealing with charging into terrain uh, and how to navigate that. So we have got a unit of intercessors up on the second floor here, or actually the first floor of this building here. And then we've got some Lich Guard down the bottom here that are going to try and charge into them. Now, the Lich Guard are outside of their engagement range, uh, which is one inch horizontally, but five inches vertically, which means that we need to take that into account. Uh, when making sure they're outside of that engagement range, which they are. 
So when you're going to make a charge into terrain, what you need to do, you not only need to measure horizontal movement, you also need to measure vertical movement. So for these guys to actually get within uh, engagement range, even though vertically it is five inches, to get within that one inch horizontally, it is gonna be four inches to the nearest model. And then the levels are also two and a half each. Uh, so it means that it's gonna need a three. So it's gonna be basically needing a seven inch charge to get into the intercessors that are on this second floor. And they do it with a mighty 10, getting a nice big 10 inch charge right there. So what this will mean is they'll, the front guys will be able to move. So we'll probably be able to even get this back guy over to there. But with that extra movement, we can get some of the guys over the other side. However, we have to be careful about keeping within unit coherency as well. So we are going to just pile in, in we'll make our charge move into this side of the building. So this guy is gonna be able to move that four inches and then the two inches up, right up and into that corner there. Then we've got the next one who is gonna be able to do the same and getting up into there as well. And then the third guy should be able to fit onto there. Now, legally, that is not actually a valid model placement because you can't have your base hanging off uh, a piece of terrain. So he'll actually just need to be directly underneath and then the other three will also make their moves underneath. However, they are within that inch for engagement range, uh, but they will not be able to make their attacks until the two up the top have managed to clear some way for them to be able to fit on there. And the second rules section, in addition to the charge phase, is charging models with the fly keyword or charging with fly models. When making a charge move with a model that has the fly keyword, instead of measuring the distance across the battlefield that you would move, you measure the distance through the air that they would travel to get to their target unit, AKA you are measuring in three dimensions uh, when doing so. While making a charge move, much like when make a move during the movement phase, fly keyword models are able to pass over other models, but still can't end any move on top of another model. While making a charge move, much like when making a move during the movement phase, Fly keyword models are able to pass over other models, but still cannot end any move on top of another model when doing so. And we're also gonna jump into an example here where we're gonna look at a unit of Vanguard veterans with jump packs on the second level, charging into a unit of Necron Warriors on the ground floor and how we go about resolving that as well. Alrighty, so for our last example, we're gonna look at using fly keyword models when making a charge. And specifically our unit for this one is gonna be a unit of five Vanguard veterans going into a unit of 10 Necron warriors. So the way that this works is you actually measure three movement in three dimensions. So instead of doing a down and across like we did in the previous example, you actually just measure how far they would need to get to be within engagement range, which is gonna be a six inch charge. Uh, from these Vanguard vets up on that top level there. So let's see how far they are gonna be able to get. They're gonna be able to get 10 inches, which means the guys right up the back, up along here, are gonna be able to get a decent amount of movement into this unit. So they're gonna definitely be able to move in that three dimensions over to here, getting into base contact. And then maintaining unit coherency during the charge is also very important. So they're gonna be able to pop, make their moves into these Necron Warriors here and over here as well. And uh, that is how you resolve with the fly keyword unit of the Vanguard veterans. And that'll actually be it for all of our examples of how to resolve charges during the charge phase. Now, once you have resolved all of the charges that you are wanting to make this turn with your units, that will actually be the end of the charge phase and then you move on to the next phase, which we'll cover in our next video, which is gonna be the fight phase. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, well, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Obviously, we are at the new setup and it's a little bit of a different look to what we have done previously, but I still hope that the, the quality of information 
and the additional examples are really helpful in terms of understanding that how the different rules interact during the charge phase when you're looking to make charges and getting into close combat with your opponents. I want to thank everyone who has been enjoying our content on our YouTube channel. I want to let everyone know that we've passed some of the benchmarks for community monetization on YouTube currently. We just need to get our watch hours up to 3,000. So if you do enjoy our content, feel free to watch some stuff back. If you want to put one of the playlists on repeat, feel free to do so to get those watch hours up for us. We would really appreciate it here on the network if you would help us with this, but also completely understand if you choose not to as well. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit it with a like. If you have any feedback on the new style of videos we've got going on for a little while, feel free to leave it down in the comments section below. And if you haven't already, feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so you'll be notified as to when we are releasing more content here on the ATWN, whether that is more in this series of how to play Warhammer 40,000 10th edition, or it's from Sprue to Tabletop videos, or it's Wargaming highlights, tournament coverage, all of the content that we create over here as well. Most of it, you'll actually be able to catch live on our Twitch channel where we do our tournament coverage, the tournament previews, IT South Pacific snapshot, as well as also hobbying sessions with myself where I work on my personal hobbying. So if you head over to Australis TWN over on Twitch, drop it with a follow, turn on that notification bell so you're able to be notified as to when we are starting up the streams as well. But ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.